We all know that billionaires can afford to buy anything they want, from private islands to whiskey companies. But if you think that owning priceless things is only for the 1% of the 1%, think again. Our show sponsor, Masterworks.art, is opening the door to the general public to one of the most exclusive asset classes there is, contemporary art. Most billionaires collect art because it's one of the best ways to diversify their portfolio. Now, if you're not a billionaire or an expert art collector, you need to check out masterworks.art. Masterworks team of experts leverage data to identify art that will generate the best returns. In fact, they returned 31% to their investors in 2021. Getting started is super easy. Click on the link below or go to masterworks.art slash chael. Create an account, browse their artwork, and diversify your portfolio. Masterworks also offers a secondary market on their website where you can sell your shares to another member. If you want to take advantage of this opportunity and invest in fine art, there is a wait list. But you can skip the line and immediately start investing today by clicking on the link below. All right, let's revisit Colby Covington, guys. What does Colby need to do now? We know what his marching orders are in the short term. He's got Masvidal. Colby wants to be the champion of the world. He has not given up on that goal or that dream, and that's very relevant. I have known him since he was a little boy. If somebody came to him and told him he cannot have that ultimate goal, number one, the absolute best, you are going to crush the spirit of an athlete who requires motivation. But if we were to back the tape up, we look at the calendar, take a good look at Madison Square Garden, Covington versus Usman, part two. Usman comes out on top. Now, that was a fantastic fight. It was very close. It had a little bit of controversy. It had everything that you would need to be able to get a rematch. Difference. It was the rematch. So now Usman's up 2-0. Now, Usman is playing by a different set of rules. Usman could duck Colby. He could avoid Colby. He could publicly come out and refuse to fight Colby. And he would have no shame. There would be no egg on his face. Nobody would tease him, none of his peers, no pressures, because the rules are now different when you're talking about going and doing something for a third time. Hold that thought. I was under the impression that Colby agreed with what I just said. I was under the impression when that fight ended that Colby's chance and path to his world championship will come after Usman either gets beat or steps down that Colby could not go back through Usman. Colby does not agree at all. Colby is speaking up about this right now. Colby's declaring that he won that fight, that he should have won their first meeting, and that he will beat him in the next. He's talking about a best of four. I apologize, the best of seven. He's talking about everything under the sun that he needs to be talking about, and he's changing my mind. No rule anywhere that says you can't go after a guy for a third time. Maybe historically speaking, you have a hard time of finding other guys that did. It's not impossible. Volkanovsky Holloway, it's not impossible. So why couldn't Kobe do it? And if Kobe is going to do it, how do we get him there? Because guys, if there's anything that we learn at Madison Square Garden, watching the 170-pound championship, is that we have the right two guys. Kobe and Usman have separated themselves from the pack. Your eyes showed you that. The judge's decision showed you that. And Kamara Usman pulled you that. Usman could have been cooler about it. He said, man, that guy is tough as hell. I'm glad he's done. He could be champion someday. I mean, he's in my rear view. I don't have to think about him again. And for the most part, I do think that Usman's right. But if Colby's going to get back, if Colby's going to keep himself motivated, so he's going to keep driving himself to sacrifice and work as hard as he's working, he's got to have this goal and vision. And that can't just be what I said, which is Usman either gets beat or Usman steps down. Colby wants the third option, which is Usman stay right where you are because I'm coming after you. What does Colby get if he beats Masvidal? What does Masvidal get if he beats Colby? They're in the exact same spot. They both want to be champion, but they both lost to the champion twice. How do you get back to him? You have what is pretty clearly the number one contenders match. You get the BMF against the former interim champion. That's pretty clearly on paper, the top two guys, but it's not a number one contenders match for the reason that I just stated. How long does that have to be true? How many guys does Colby have to beat or use Masvidal? If you're a Masvidal fan, how many guys does Masvidal have to beat 
and he can't ever return to that spot? You know where I'm going with this, guys. If you guys watch the channel, you know where I'm going with this. There is nothing more important right now than the BMF belt being up. The BMF champion is going to be in there. The championship was never on the line. He never lost the championship. I've had people try to correct me and tell me, no, Usman is the BMF champion because Masvidal had it and Usman beat him. That's not how titles work. I don't make these rules, by the way. This isn't Chael over here playing Jack Tunney following the Chael rules. You, The title has to be up. It has to be declared. It has to be set ahead of time. Ric Flair got pinned plenty of times, but he kept the championship because they were non-title matches. I won a championship one time, or at least I beat the champion. I beat the champion. I did not become the champion because the champion had missed weight the day before, making it a non-title match. Because of me and because of what happened to me, the commissions have changed that rule. The champion is eligible to lose the championship if he is the one that misses weight. The challenger, if he misses weight and wins the fight, does not get the belt. But they, And that's the way it is right now. Guys, it hasn't always been that way. Literally, they did that because of the night it happened to me. They never envisioned that a champion would be the one coming in seven pounds above the agreed upon limit. So it happened, happened one time. They changed the rule. But I bring that to you because you really can't push back on me and say, hey, Chael, Usman is actually the champion. You're talking about a linear champion, which is nothing more than a discussion. That's like saying that Usman's the GOAT. I agree with you that he is, but it's still just something that you say, and that's where the linear belt goes. The belt is not up unless the belt is put up. Colby wants to be champion. Colby was the, you want a riddle, guys? You want a riddle that you think I'm playing with you right now? Colby was the interim champion of the world, never lost, and no longer was the interim champion of the world. I am not kidding about that. One day, he's just no longer the champion without ever getting beats. And there was something about stripping an interim title that just went under the radar. I mean, if you would have done that with an undisputed title, in all fairness, but there was something about because it was the interim title, I never heard anybody speak up. Colby's yet to defend the interim championship because they didn't put it up. You got the interim champion taking on the BMF champion. This is a massive fight, but I have to re-ask the question for a third time. What is on the line?